Welcome to part 3 of this series and today we're going to discuss how to handle with the huge complexity of our data set. So imagine again that we have this situation in which there is no way in which a single line can draw, can, can divide the world into the blues and the oranges. This is discussed very nicely in this book by Lipman and this is the idea. If we have a single layer, the only thing that we can do is a linear combination of the inputs. So in two dimensions, a linear combination means that we are splitting the world in above a line or below a line. Okay, but what if we have something like this? Well, here's where the magic of neural networks begin. So now we can combine straight lines like this. And if we, I combine regions which are basically dividing the world into halves, I can use something like this. So this would be a situation in which at least I have three neurons in the second layer. One neuron is cutting the plane in, in this direction. Another neuron is cutting the plane in that direction. And the other one is cutting the plane in this direction. So with one layer, I can divide the world with a straight line. With two layers, I can combine these straight lines to create shapes like this that are somehow using the borders to, to classify. Well, you can see the pattern here. If now we have three layers, then we can combine regions like this and overlap them with different colors so we can create regions which are arbitrary self and do not need to touch the borders. So we can build classifiers that can, train, can be trained to classify shapes like this. And this is the magic of neural networks and this is the reason why they are so popular these days. Again, going back to this playground, what if we have this situation? Remember, with two neurons we can do combinations of something like this. And again, we cannot do magic here. And for good reason, because combining things like this, the best that you can do is create some sort of stripe lines. So with two neurons, we can improve a little bit our classification, but this is not perfect. So what if we have three neurons? And now you can see that the classifier is much better. Actually, it's, it's kind of unexpected, right? Because I would expect something like one blob here, but one blob there, and the other two groups there, but we have these fancy shapes here. Maybe you have a question in mind. So before we saw that combining straight lines, we can do something like this. But why on earth we have this rounded shape here? Okay, this is related to the fact that we are not using linear combinations alone. So after we have combined these shapes there, we are using another activation function. And again, this part here is smoothing out. So the probabilities here are changed, are changed but because of this sigmoid function, is not a sharp line. What if we have four lines? And now this is much better. As you can see here, we have this is specialized on the top right. Uh, this is top left and this looks like this but this is not the same because again the weight here has a different sign so you would you could imagine this as something like this one in which we are inverting the colors but now it's clear that if we have specialized uh, groups neurons in each of the corners then combining them we have a better classifier and this is actually what our eyes our brains are doing so basically whenever we see this pattern here probably you think okay Clearly, we have two groups, two blue groups in these corners and the other ones in these corners. This is a take home message. So combining humble logistic regressions, you can fit almost anything. And let me show you this again using this example that we've used in other videos. We have these two classes, the blues and the greens, and we have some overlap there. Um, um, but I always have pretty good classifying this. As you can see, it, if you have to tell me where are the red, you could say, okay, you have kind of this circle in the top part, and then the blues are surrounding, like a kind of a smile around there. So let's see how the neural networks can do this. So let's uh, start with just one neuron. And again, with one neuron, we can only do linear combinations. So we cannot split the world in up and down. So we have a lot of false negatives and a lot of false positives. So this is really bad. What if we have two? Then we can have something more interesting because now we can have something like this. So we can specialize in different parts of the graph. Imagine that we, going back to our playground before, maybe one of the neurons is specializing in this line. The other neuron maybe is specializing in this line. And combining with a sigmoid function, we have this smooth boundary, which is capturing pretty well uh, this structure. What if we have 10 neurons in the hidden layer? Then we have, as with other methods, a problem of overfitting. So probably this noise here is overfitted. So this island here is not very representative and I don't understand what is happening there. So again, you have to be careful because more neurons doesn't mean that you are have a better classifier. Of course, this is not the end of the story because as I'm going to show you in another set of videos about training, we have some penalty function that 
can try to reduce the overfeeding of having a lot of neurons. And even with the same architecture, we have different boundaries there that are corrected by this penalty. So again, what if you have situations more complex and imagine that you have this spiral shape, again, you could say, okay, if I have a spiral, my, my main message here is that if I had if I add more hidden layers, I have more specialized neurons, and then I can be better classify. But this is not true in general. So again, you can see here that the first step is just splitting the world in a straight line, then combining those straight lines. But again, this is not very meaningful. So what's the meaning of this? I don't see the point of this specialized neuron or this one. And as you can see here, this neuron is almost irrelevant because all the classification is doing there. Alternatively, we can do, you can use a smarter input. So what if instead of using x1 and x2, we use x1, x2, x1 square and x2 square. And here is again, this is more interpretable. And one of the main messages of this course is not that machine learning is not for fitting. Machine learning is for understanding, so gaining knowledge. And I love this example because here you can see that you can create an, an spiral combining different spots. So this neuron is specialized if in a small spot this one in a larger one, a little bit larger, a little bit larger. And what about these two neurons? I don't see the point of those two neurons. And actually, probably those are responsible of this mess up in this part of the graph. So again, go back to this playground web page and try a little bit what happens if you use these inputs, but not six neurons, but just four of them. So maybe with four neurons, we can recreate a spiral as a combination of circles. So another message of this video is that sometimes smart inputs trump complex topologies. So uh, yes, I agree, artificial neural networks are amazing, they can do a lot of things, but quoting Han Solo, uh, don't get so excited, princess. <laughs>